Okay, well, uh, who who all who all is with us? Who who is actually present now? Uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we've got Daniel, Amnon, Craig, Yuval, and myself. That's probably sufficient to to start uh, start a conversation. Um, who's had a chance to to go through the paper? Uh, top to bottom, just out of curiosity. <laughs> it, weighs <laughs> in, it weighs in at 52 pages, and I have a hard time <laughs> reading it. <laughs> I've gone through it. Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, uh, in, any 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 comments? Uh, the sort of high uh, high level comments before we dive into specifics. I think all of my questions are going to end up being specific questions. Um, I think uh, the prologue itself uh, is. It's really, it's really an exciting read to get through. Uh, I think the, the wording could be tailored a tad bit different, which is probably one of the things I'm going to be addressing uh, okay, in some pull requests. Um, but it does sort of build up the momentum for the rest of the paper. Uh, I just think it could, could actually build up a tad bit more momentum before you dive into Chapter 1. So, Ah, most excellent. That's, that's yeah. excellent feedback, just the kind of thing we need to hear. Okay, a anyone else have a chance to get to the paper? Or, uh... Uh, I I did. Um, I also, I also have a link right here. Uh, for the paper, uh, if you guys want it. Yes. Um, I'm one step away. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, my sort of high level comment is mostly about how uh the technology that we're using seems to be uh quite substantially more powerful than what we're using it for. And I'm sort of wondering about that uh, discrepancy and maybe what else we might do with the technology. Uh, that's sort of my high-level comment, and I can dive down into details. That's that's awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> uh, in 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 indeed indeed, that's a very very good comment, and I'd I'd like to I'd like to address that uh, as as we move into it. Uh, uh, but before I just uh, make one quick, one last poll to see if anyone else has a high-level comments, and, um, and okay, good. That looks like a good link, uh, and then we can we can move into specifics. Going once, going twice. Um, okay. Well, let's let's move into specifics. Uh, let's let's begin with your comments, Craig. Sure thing. Uh, well, first, uh, I guess it was uh, who was it that just spoke? Was Daniel me. saying that the, that the technology is obviously much more uh, expansive and robust than the initial use case of the social network. Um, and one of the parts that that I got into, I actually wrote my notes down in order uh, as I was reading the paper. First started out with the web nodes, uh, the ability for technically adept folks or other people who want to tap into the network being able to provide front ends, etc. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to be using uh, Scenario.com as the as the primary portal to access uh, the network from a front end perspective, but you've got applications uh, mentioned later in the paper as well as different kinds of web nodes to sort of either allow on-ramping of users or providing a different kind of interface, et cetera. Just curious if you could talk a little bit about the concept of the web nodes. Yes, uh, sure. Um, the, so it, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at some of the architectural diagrams and some of the, the ping pong diagrams, but the, the application uh, is layered. Um, and uh, at, at a certain layer, there's, there's a, a capability that's kind of like made safe, except that it's uh, more organized around facilitating um, a, a programming model that fits with a lot of uh, scenarios goals. So that programming model, we hope, will be the target uh, for many different kinds of applications. Um, the programming model um, is very simple in the sense that, that um, uh, just a uh, there are, there are just a few basic constructs, um, but at the same time, it's sort of you know the simplicity belies the complexity. So just like you know, there's just a few rules for the game of Go, but 
but uh, the game itself is uh, infinitely complex. Um, here, uh, we have a, a similar uh, kind of um, organization. So um, one of the things that, uh, that it should be obvious to anyone who's building distributed applications is that there's not a, a one-size-fits-all um, model. Uh, um, for uh, building distributed applications, you know, you can you can say, well, I'm going to do everything with messaging, but then you're you're there really are situations where a relational or other kind of transactional database uh, makes a lot of sense, especially if you have some notion of locality. Uh, otherwise, in, in other situations, publish and sub subscribe makes a lot of sense. Um, so what we have are a few primitives. Uh, which, uh, when combined and recombined, give you the full range of possible programming models. So within the same um, within the same sort of overarching programming model, uh, applications can avail themselves either of, uh, so to a transacted database where the the the, um, the locking level is extremely fine grained uh, and it's distributed. Um, or to uh, to a messaging model or to a pub sub model, and all of those fit within this programming model. And then that programming model. That, so then above that, um, it's possible to access that programming model in a lot of different ways. So so initially, there's a language level binding uh, for the Scala language, and because Scala is a JVM language, essentially it's a language level binding for any JVM language, whether it's Clojure or Java or you know, take your pick of the JVM languages, JRuby. Um, so just because you know we 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 picked a JVM language, we sort of get a lot of a lot of that for free. Um, but in addition to that, there are entry points either from uh, the an AMQP provider like Rabbit or uh, uh, from uh, an HTTP uh, you know a RESTful interface. Uh, REST uh, the RESTful interface is uh, a little less powerful um, because the, the the REST model doesn't incorporate the same kinds of semantic richness that our programming model does. Uh, so, uh, a simple a simple example uh, within the programming model, it's possible to have nested sessions, uh, and that's you know so speaking directly to Daniel's point. Uh, nested sessions is not something that you do over HTTP, right? HTTP has request response, uh, and even if you have, you know, long polling or any of these or web sockets or whatever, um, essentially the model is request response, right? So if you think about it like a like a parentheses, uh, the the only legal traces in an HTTP based model are open paren, close paren, open paren, close paren. Whereas the programming model offered here, it could be open paren, open paren, open paren, close paren, open paren, close paren, right? <laughs> the kinds of uh, transaction models that are possible, uh, or session models that are possible uh, with uh, with the the programming model uh, being offered here, um, and 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 as a result, uh, even though you can enter it from HTTP, that um, that interface is somewhat, um, I don't know what the right word is, emasculated. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so anyway, so hopefully that, that, that speaks a little bit to your question, Craig. Does, does that make sense? Yes, it actually does make sense. Um, I guess I'm thinking of things more from a Bitcoin-esque perspective where we have uh, a decentralized network and ledger, and that ledger is, is built upon. So when we work on the Omni layer, for example, we're encoding metadata on top of Bitcoin transactions and then parsing through those to build the current state. And I'm curious if, uh, if in essence, you, we're going to consider this to be a ledger whose state is built over time. Uh, and from that perspective, are these web nodes, as you're describing them, similar to uh, basically block explorers plus interactive functionality that are interacting with that quote-unquote ledger? So that's that's a very that's a very interesting perspective, and I, I like the way you think. That's that's a an exciting way to 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 cast uh, uh, some of the the programming semantics here. Um, I, I'll be honest. I I, I um, distributed consensus in general means a lot of resources are tied up. A lot of the time, right? Um, and so I, I don't often spend a lot of time thinking about um, 
uh, distributed consensus as a uh, as a central component. Uh, more more often than not, I think of the ledger as as kind of okay. And now when, now that we're all done, we'll go and record the state in such a way that everyone can agree. <laughs> um, uh, and but but I like the way you're thinking about it, which is a lot more integrated. Where you know there's this kind of state exploration mechanism, and then as uh, chunks of um, chunks of the network get to uh, you know a, a, a desired outcome, then that can then be uh, um, recorded or persisted in the, in the distributed uh, mechanism or the distributed ledger. So, so yes, that's a, that's an interesting way to characterize it. I, and in fact, I, I hadn't, I hadn't actually thought of it quite that way. So I like that. All right, cool. It actually leads into my next question. Uh, in the white paper, it talks about, actually, I think it's a quote here that I copied and pasted. Scenario also offers a unique social approach to proof of work. It will be connected to a kind of mining and amp creation. Uh, <laughs> I think it, it then follows by, uh, this is out of scope for the paper, uh, in, in question. And I'm curious, where will that be covered, and what are the current? What's the current thinking on that concept? Uh, <laughs> of course, you would pick up on that. <laughs> That's my, uh, yeah. I, I, would, I would apologize, but I, I won't because I'm really curious. <laughs> 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 no, no, that's 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 uh, that's that's awesome. So, so there's there's a lot of thinking, um, and and you know I'll I'll go out on a limb here and, and, and let you let you see uh, get some visibility into our thinking. Um, but but none of this is you know I, I wouldn't say that the scenario team you know has full consensus behind this thinking. So so please understand that this is very exploratory, which is why we decided to mark it as out of scope for the paper for now. Um, but essentially, the issue the issue is um, in, in broad strokes. Uh, as long as cryptocurrency, as long as the value trail from cryptocurrency flows all the way back to fiat currency, um, then the adoption is considerably slowed. Um, and so uh, the question is, how, how do, is there is there a way to generate um, uh, currency and recognize value? Uh, so that those two events uh, fit together in a way that is acceptable to the the society that's using the currency, right? So, um, if, so let, let me make sure that that proposal or that proposition makes sense to you. Thus far, yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so, so then the the next the next uh, so so in in uh, Bitcoin, right? There's this kind of socially less meaningful idea of, of currency generation that isn't connected to uh, uh, work that is considered socially meaningful. Guessing a number is not actually socially meaningful, um, except in constrained circumstances. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, with that... Uh, the the there is an interesting situation where guessing a number is socially meaningful, and uh, so for example, uh, there's lots of uh, lots of interesting uh, experiments where you have a crowd guess the number of jelly beans in a jar, and it's always interesting that the the average of the guesses is is better than than any individual guess in general. Uh, so so there's there's one situation where where that's that it, that is the case, and that kind of leads to uh, this this other opportunity. Which is, um, or, or let me take a step back. We're, we're also recognizing that the online, the online, the evolution of the online technologies and the online culture has put a lot of pressure on the creative classes. So um, the example I give a lot is uh, David Torn recently published that um, Pandora paid him uh, eight dollars uh, for hundreds of thousands of plays. Of one of his tunes, right? So David Torn is an internationally acclaimed jazz guitarist, uh, you know, a musical genius, uh, and you know, for for many people, just you know, a, a giant. Um, so uh, the 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 difficulty is that um, with that kind of return on the investment that uh, that David has put in, right? I mean, it's like an entire lifetime of acquiring skills. Uh, plus this this sense of the development of a sensibility that that is uh, essentially unparalleled. Um, there, there's no there's no way that he could 
continue being David Torn on that kind of salary, right? That that doesn't buy the the gas for the car or the <laughs> you know even the the next guitar uh, set of guitar strings. So 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 there's a lot of pressure there. There's a lot of pressure on journalists. The creative classes are squeezed, right? And so the question is, can we can can we um, create a, a mechanism whereby uh, when society recognizes uh, a contribution of value, that that can correlate to uh, the creation of um, currency that goes with that value. In other words, the creative classes have this magical ability to essentially ex nihilo create value. Likewise, uh, you know, in uh, in in something of an analogy, the currency system. Uh, ha typically has a mechanism whereby it can create currency, you know, out of nothing, right? So m mining is 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 an, essentially an example of that. Um, and so the question is, is there a mechanism whereby these two things can come together? Uh, and, and certainly within this scenario setup, there is a there is a way. Now we don't know if this is a, 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 a the right way. And there's certainly a lot of active debate within the team, but at least one mechanism that 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 uh, might have legs uh, is um, a a mechanism whereby Rio, which is the 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 standing and a, a, a quantitative measure of the standing in community, can be converted into amps, right? And it, once you can do so, Rio cannot be given away. It's not a conserved quantity. It's a calculated quantity. Uh, as we as we try to make clear in the paper, um, whereas amps are a conserved quantity and they're they're held in the distributed ledger, so if there was a way to convert Rio into amps, um, suddenly you have this mechanism whereby someone who has established a standing in in the community because of the value of their content uh, can can essentially capitalize on that. Uh, and and do something with it. So, for example, they could decide that oh well, there's this other artist or this other creative type that's not getting the kind of attention that they deserve, and they can then pass on uh, uh, the amps to that person, uh, which which allows uh, that person to amplify their message and then become recognized. Right. So it's a it's a it's a different kind of uh, economic dial, uh, and it it and but the intent is. To be able to um, help uh, uh, the uh, this process, support this process of value creation and the recognition of that value creation, and the intent, and, and along with that intent is the recognition that if we were successful in that uh, endeavor, that would dramatically accelerate the shift uh, from, or has the potential to dramatically accelerate the shift from the fiat currencies to the cryptocurrencies. That that feel is inevitable, but but we want to help it. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I think that makes sense. I guess the the the, the question then becomes: You've got uh, as a content creator, you've got the ability to to publish the content you've created, uh, and you're actually uh, burning or spending your amps uh, to do so. Are you you're proposing basically an, an alternate method such that without amps uh, from the get go, uh, someone can have creative content that others. Uh, appreciate and because of that appreciation uh, the amps come into existence for that content? Essentially correct, yes. Okay, okay cool. I, yeah, I didn't see that covered in the document and if there's not consensus on that yet internally uh, I understand why. But I do like that idea uh, as an alternate means. So it's sort of like a, a negative amps that get filled back up uh, to baseline. Yes, correct. Okay, exactly. I, I can definitely appreciate that. Um, that leads to my next question. Awesome. <laughs> and that is, um, well, it's, it's, it's sort of a two-part. It's sort of bootstrapping the system because the description uh, as, as described in the document makes sense to me at scale. So you've got a whole bunch of content producers and a whole bunch of uh, friends and, and those who have real relationships with one another. Um, but at, the, at day one, you've got people who, who are created, let's say, for example, I have no friends. And I join, uh, and I join the scenario network. I, I don't have any amps to start and I have to acquire amps somehow or produce the content as you just described that others will find valuable. What is my, what is the bootstrapping method for just the early days or, or at least the early users days? Uh, right, so, so that, that, that's, that's a fantastic question um, and, and 
I sort of wish Dor were here because he he has a better handle on some of that. Uh, Yuval, please jump in. I've just been you know mumbling. <laughs> yeah, no, you you're doing great. Um, I think from from the little bit that that we've discussed this, and I remember you know Dol's um, thoughts on this. Uh, I, I think they're basically. Um, Again, this is this is also sort of highly dependent on which project we actually end up um, building. But essentially, uh, we are going for some sort of initial community, um, which is basically kind of the scenario, the top level community, so to speak. Um, that you know, initially everyone will be part of, and and that will be like the base for 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 continuing development of other of other communities. Um, so so that should answer the part where uh, you know, if I join, like, where do I belong? You belong to the top level community. And which we hope will have some significant amount of, of content, and, and we'll definitely you know take some action to make sure that's the case. Um, and regarding you know where do I get my amps? Um, so again, that it, it, you know if we do end up um, you know implementing what Greg has been discussing um, uh, just now, um, then that should solve the question of at least you know getting a few uh, tokens here and there that I can actually do something with. Um, but you know, alternatively, you, you would initially be gaining mostly reputation uh, in terms of just bringing in more content and making the network um, larger and, and enriching the community that, that you're part of. Um, and, and and again, take it from there, I guess. There are there are a couple of other mechanisms. So so that was a, that was a great uh, summary, Yuval. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm glad someone can do that. <laughs> 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 I tend to wander all over the map, but uh, but so there were a couple. There were a couple of other things. One, one is that one gains uh, amps as a result of deployment of attention, right? So, um, so as amps are flowing through, if if uh, if a, a user participates, then then some uh, or engages with content that is that is amped in order to make it through the network, um, they they gain some of those amps, right? So the, they're essentially earning. Uh, just through participation, um, and then of course there's also the initial block, which we which we didn't mention, right? So there there is some initial uh, uh, you know genesis block of amps, uh, and and uh, early uh, people who who you know participate early will be there are going to be mechanisms whereby they can get uh, some piece of that uh, initial block. Um, yeah, so like an, amp, like an amp faucet at some point. Amp faucet. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm stumbling over that because I I, t I tend to think of an amp faucet as something you can just turn on and and you know, like if if you have kids like I do, then they leave it on. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. No, no, no. So so not cl not quite like a faucet. Maybe a little more like a bucket of water. <laughs> okay. Well, I was just thinking of you know the first the first year of Bitcoin. So you know 2009, yeah. um, the system was was fully functional. The problem is is that no one had any bitcoins. Right. I mean, one one person did, and they had a lot of them, and they sent yeah. it to one or two guys, etc. Yes. Uh, and I'm just curious, it, it it stalled the adoption because there was really no way for the average person to get anything at right. the beginning. So I just I'm curious how how the scenario overcomes that for the very initial bootstrapping phase. Right. So 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 there's uh, um the 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 two mechanisms I spoke of uh, help with that a lot. So one is that the uh, um, People who participate in the crowd sale, they're you know part part of that crowd sale is they're they're gaining amps, so they, they start off with some distribution of amps. The other the other part is that people who who you know either decide not to join that or or miss that boat uh, in in some way, uh, just by participating in the network and deploying their attention, they're earning amps. So it won't it won't necessarily be at, you know at uh, some astronomical rate. But they are, and they are, in fact, already participating in the attention economy. Okay, cool. I think that answers most of my questions, except for the last one, which uh, we talk about septrons, uh, the stimulus response uh, algorithm and concept. And then you mentioned that the septrons you expect to evolve over time. I was curious if you could talk to me one about the concept of septrons, um, followed by perhaps the the very first types of septrons that you think are going to be used on the system. And then some examples of you know wildest imagination. What are some of the you know potential revolutionary applications of septrons that we get added to the network over time as they evolved? Dude, has anyone ever told you you're very astute? <laughs> it's like you put your finger on all the hot spots. 
<laughs> Very awesome. Well, thank um, you, sir. And that's what he gets paid for, I think. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, uh, so no, that was that was uh, well, well spotted. Um, so so again, I I really wish Dor were here because he's he's probably the biggest advocate of of the the Cetron idea. Um, essentially, we uh, one way to view it, um, and this is only one avenue uh, of entry, is a generalization of the the sort of card based design. Um, and uh, but the, the the advantage of that view, uh, so so card based design, as I think many people are aware is um, driving uh, a lot of the mobile development and because of its success in, in, in mobile um, we find that um, it's moving over into the web as well um, and essentially you know as the the Ceptron discussion mentions you know what 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 we take away from the card based design is this combination of um, uh, information and action that that uh, human brains are sort of organized around um, you know making bite-sized pieces of information that are related in context to some actions uh, and so you know the, the the idea of a card you know so um, here's a post uh, what are some actions you can do with that post where you can like that post you can tip tip the the, the poster you can reshare that post so those are some actions that correspond to um, the, the the bit of information that the user has received um, uh, but the card-based metaphor, uh, we feel, is is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit of a harness or a little bit of a link, uh, a limiting factor on thinking, um, because it's essentially 2D for an indie world. Um, I think probably the 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 most obvious um, next step from there is moving from 2D to 3D. Right, so you can so there are lots and lots of immersive interfaces uh, going back to Second Life or or you know you know uh, I don't know World of Warcraft. There are lots and lots of uh, of of more immersive interfaces where again you have this combination of some information that's presented uh, and and relevant actions. Um, for 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 my. Um, for my tastes, you know, I don't actually spend a lot of time in those kinds of interfaces. But one place where where I I find this idea to have the a lot of potency uh, and and direct connection to the attention economy has to do with um, participation in self governance. Um, so uh, you may be aware, uh, or you know, folks here may be aware or have heard me speak about. Uh, the fact that serious games and serious play has had a lot of purchase, no pun intended, um, in the uh, corporate sector in the U.S. for over a decade. Uh, and, um, and in Europe, which is slightly ahead of the U.S., it's, it, mo it started moving from the corporate sector into uh, public participation, so the pu public arena. Uh, uh, as early as, uh, I'm sorry, as, as, as long ago as five or seven years ago. Um, and there, there's, there's good reason for this. Um, the kind of, trying to be as, as uh, brief as I can, um, the human mind seems to, there's a lot of evidence that the human mind is organized around games, right? So the, 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 the power of the game metaphor uh, is, uh, is you know there's a lot of talk about gamification of interfaces and that sort of thing but if you if you actually look right the shift the shift from war to sport was <laughs> was a monumental gamification <laughs> and and it allowed for it allowed for a different a different kind of discourse right so disputes could be settled without a lot of bloodshed um, uh, so that's kind of that's that's one area where we where we see this happening uh, at sort of a fairly deep level in the human psyche. But another place where this happens at a fairly deep level is in mathematics. It turns out that there are no less than three different highly successful game theories. There's the uh, the Highland Abramsky Highland Ong uh, game theories, which solved uh, 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 an outstanding problem in programming language semantics. The problem was outstanding for over over a quarter of a century, until the Abramsky Highland Ong games came forward. 
once they solved that problem, then there was this explosion in programming semantics based around the particular notion of gain that was formalized there. There's the, the um, <coughs> uh, uh, von Neumann uh, games, uh, which were instrumental. Uh, you know, so Nash got the Nobel Prize in economics for his utilization of, uh, or for the equilibrium theorem in uh, 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 von Neumann-based games, or the application of the equilibrium theorem in von Neumann-based games to economics. And then uh, there's Conway's games, not, not the game of life, but uh, the Conway games in which he formalized our notion of number, uh, reformalized the notion of number, which not only captured all of the notions of number considered to date, but also discovered new ones, such as the infinitesimals, and gave us a different way to view um, uh, uh, Leibniz's form of the calculus, etc. So, so the the point the point of mentioning all those is that deep inside the human psyche is this notion of game. Um, and this notion of game uh, uh, helps us. So we learn when we play. So this notion of game helps us uh, to get to tap into the deliberative capacity of the collective, right? So if you remember back to what I was saying before about you know guessing the jelly beans in the jar, um, that that's that's the tip of a, of a very large iceberg, which has to do with our our understanding that somehow the wisdom of the collective is greater than the wisdom of any individual, right? And that's sort of, you know, coded into lots of democratic organizations of society. So, so the point is, how do, we, how do we create a conduit of discourse between the individual and the collective? Voting is one approach, right? The problem with voting is that it's binary. So it's not, it's not possible to have this, this nuanced, Discussion between the collective and the individual in binary, uh, and and either all, all of the attendant problems show up in in, in voting based decision making. Games, on the other hand, have this have this potential to allow for a more nuanced language between the individual and the collective. And games are where I see um, exactly so. So games are where I see the uh, the. The, the Septron idea beginning to explode, because uh, you know, f from my point of view, the whole the whole point, or one of the principal reasons I'm engaged in in the development of the scenario network is to create mechanisms whereby um, we have uh, uh. We, we have the potential to get to a better uh, utilization of the internet for self governance. All right. <laughs> awesome answer. Awesome answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Those are my questions, and uh, very impressive to, to hear you answer them as astute as you did. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And anyone else? Anyone else want to jump in and and uh, and uh, fire 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 some shots at the paper? <laughs> Daniel. Are you there? Amnon, do you have any thoughts? Adam, any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Daniel, we can't hear you. We did hear you earlier. Maybe if you drop out and come back, it might work. I don't know. Is it working now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry. Sorry about that. Um. Uh. So. So I guess I uh, didn't want to fire shots at the paper so much as riff alongside uh, some of the things that you were saying. Uh. In some places, maybe to like tie things together and. Uh, simplify them in ways, and maybe some other ways to uh, push them even a, a little bit farther than, than you were going. Um, uh, one thing just about the Rio and amps, and so this is just my impression from uh, kind of a distance, but, but here, here's how I was... Uh, my impression from the paper is that um, uh, what's really going on is, the, is a Rio calculation, where the calculation is this uh, spontaneous uh, reputation assessment of members as they're sharing 
content. Um, and if you do well at that, your Rio score goes up. And if you do poor at that, your Rio score goes down. We're well and poor here are evaluated by the community, how, how much uh, engagement it generates. Um, and then on top of that, you can also get amps. And so amps is this way of sort of stirring the pot more than you could with just your voice alone. Uh, so uh, what you get here is this kind of uh, like hybrid uh, 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 reputation score that both has a monetary component and a non-monetary sort of social component. Um, where the component, the social component is the Rio component, and that has a uh, social value, and it's like a direct representation of the social value of the social work that you've done for the community. And the AMP um, is this additional uh, sort of money. So uh, we've been uh, talking with people on Twitter who are worried about the money component as being a corrupting influence. Um, and, and the discussion reminds me a lot of uh, 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 the freemium games, which I talk about in the white paper. So um, in, in the freemium gaming, uh, there's a worry that, uh, for instance, the leaderboards in the games aren't meaningful because people can just buy, you know, the big sword or whatever and uh, uh, jump levels when they're not allowed to. And so, so the idea is that it's a, uh, uh, it, it's bad for the uh, community to have that uh, monetary influence. And but I think the uh, the scenario discussion uh, approach here is is good precisely because it has this hybrid approach. So it's not, uh, there's this, it, you're able to pull the brakes a little bit on the money because there's a social value that has an inherent value uh, in, that's driving the network. Um, I don't know if that helps at all. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's, a, that's a nice characterization. I think uh, um, very recently I was talking with, with Dora Nuval and I was saying like, you know, in, a, in an ideally functioning, um, uh, democratic capitalist state. Essentially, every citizen has two knobs, right? You can you can you can dial with with capital, uh, and you can dial with uh, with votes. And those those two knobs are sort of organized around slightly different uh, expressions of will, right? So so capital is is mostly about the expression of individual will. Although I mean, you know, people can get together and spend capital in blocks, but. But but on a day to day basis, you know, it's mostly about people buying sundries, right, and and uh, supporting themselves. Uh, whereas the the votes as as a as a as a thing you can spend um, are essentially uh, you know a, a kind of dial that one spins around the collective will. Uh, and so I, I think there's a, there's a there's a rough analogy there uh, as well, uh, you know, sort of along along the lines of what you're saying, right? So so Rio. Um, is is sort of like a kind of voting mechanism, and it's really interesting, right? Because if you actually look at the Rio protocol, it's stunningly like an electronic voting protocol, right? That's actually how we started the design of the protocol. We we went and grabbed uh, one of the best uh, uh, electronic protocols out there and adapted it to our purposes, right? So there, there's a like a, a very low level, clear indication that Rio is kind of like voting. Um, uh, and then similarly, amps are a lot like capital, right? You know, and and again, they work. They're sort of slanted towards um, individual will as opposed to collective will. I've got my message. I want to get it out. You know, I'm going to push it. Uh, so 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 yeah, there, um, those two those two notions are there to balance each other out. Uh, so I, I I like your characterization as well. Uh, uh, good, thank you. Um, well, one other thing uh, about action. So you talked about the card metaphor as being uh, presented, in, or the card having this uh, presentation that is suited to the brain, that it's uh, stimulus coupled with an action. Mm -hmm. And one thing I wanted maybe to complicate this a little bit is that the actions are goal oriented. So the reason that I choose one action over another is because I think it uh, better satisfies some goal that I have. And so I'm always evaluating. Uh, particular actions and also particular stimuli uh, relevant to some uh, or uh, relative to some goal uh, that I have, um, and 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 uh, how likely it is to further that goal. So uh, uh, one thing that maybe hasn't shown up in the discussion so much, I, I guess this is me worrying about communities, and I think this might relate a little bit to uh, Craig's discussion of the um, what is it, the uh, uh, septrons, um, where. Um, uh, so, so uh, in the early days of the uh, of the network, I, I, I'm speaking as a G, uh, Google Plus user, so I know what it's like to be on a network that's not uh, highly used. 
<laughs> what you really need are just people who use it a lot and can develop a community around their use. But um, people need to find ends to that network. It's always hard to find uh, your, your niche in a social network. Uh, so I mean, it, it is a real concern. Um, but uh, once networks get going, um, uh, you would expect the communities to be interest-based. Um, but, but also, uh, and, and I think this is the point I want to make, is, is that they should be, in some sense, goal-based. So what does that community want to do? Or you know, what does it want to accomplish as a community? And then uh, have content be distributed, uh, not, not, just rel not just if it's rel rel relevant to my interests, but if it's relevant to my goals. Um, uh, where, where goals can be set by individuals, but also communities, and where the value of particular actions is set relative to those goals. So like if, if sharing some content so yeah, you know, there's this thing going around Facebook right now about uh, 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 flagging things that are uh, false information. Um, people share things that they know to be false all the time, though. Uh, people share, for instance, things that they're mad about that the other political party uh, talks about that they don't agree with at all, but they're sharing it simply because they're mad about it. Um, but if you had some mechanism for understanding how that share uh, impacts the community, how it furthers um, your goals or doesn't, or might be antithetical to your goals, or how it furthers the goals of the people that you op oppose, right? Um, so, like, if I'm uh, 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 sharing content on a company, you know, if I have the goal of being less uh, environmentally uh, wasteful, uh, but I but I'm also sharing a bunch of articles uh, about a company, or you know, sharing advertising for a company that doesn't work for those goals, uh, then some mechanism for showing how those things conflict and why that's not a good use of those resources. Uh, would be helpful. I, I think this is part of what I want to talk about in the agency section, um, and I think it bears on a lot of the discussion that we were having here. Maybe I should stop here and see if that resonates at all. It does for me. <laughs> uh, ciao, Amnon. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, no, I, I thought that was that was really really well said, and I think you're you're absolutely right that uh, yeah, that. People it, it, it's a it's an important um, thing to to talk about um, uh, the re the relationship of uh, the flow of information to the goals to the agency and and goals of individuals and communities uh, and 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 a whole bunch of meaning of a particular communication act is tied to exactly that. Um, so yeah, that's 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 an enormous um, uh, observation uh, and, and utterly key, right? I, I I suppose it's related to the games. I mean, what makes games interesting is that they're uh, that they're that they're goal oriented, and, and in some in some cases you can sort of set what those goals are, right? So you know you have in Go you have the big goal of winning the game, but you have a lot of choice over what the, your immediate goals are about what move to, to make next. Um, Right, right, and I, I think one of one of the interesting things is that there there are not a lot of games right now where the goal is um, uh, harmonization or the create the creation of community. Um, uh, I mean, in in human society, you know, we have music, right? Um, uh, and uh, and 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 one of its side effects, I think, is is harmonization. But but you know, right right now. In in Western society, um, the engagement with music has become this producer-consumer kind of kind of engagement, um, and and that's that's not actually uh, how music works in uh, in in other societies. For example, in West Africa, where where I studied the the drumming, um, music is is deeply integrated. It's a part of it's a part of the community. There isn't there isn't this consumer-producer division, right? The 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 mother is is dancing with the baby on the hip, um, you know, from the get-go. So everyone participates. The, the use of the drumming is used to, to cure all kinds of diseases. It, um, the sabar drumming, which I studied, uh, was used to communicate from village to village, which is why they're so friggin' loud. <laughs> um, so so, so the, 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 the point is that um, uh, the, there's sort of a, a de-evolution or involution of the use of music in society, um, and and there hasn't been a lot that's that's moved in uh, to the vacuum uh, 
which is organized around uh, principles or goals or aims of harmonization or or coming together uh, or, or 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 putting people in viable rhythms, you know, uh, productive rhythms. Uh, and so so yeah, I mean, I, I think you're 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 spot on there, and and it would be quite interesting if we if if people can um, begin to think about um, those as uh, as goals within this idea of agency and gamification. Yeah, that's that's really good. Uh, the guy on Twitter is worried that we're incentivizing looking at ads, but I think you're right. We're really incentivizing building communities, and uh, and it's just a fact that some communities form around products and brands, and we we can't shut that out. Um, that's part of that's part of our communities. It's a sad fact of life that those corporate brands are part of our communities, but but they are, and um, there should be a space for them on our networks. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I, uh, go ahead, Craig. You were about to say something. I was. I actually had a question written down that was along that kind of topic. Is you know, advertising is and marketing is a form of content creation. And I was kind of curious. Uh, I wasn't going. To, was not going to go down the gamification uh, route, but I suppose I could. Uh, let's say I've got very, very deep pockets, and I've got lots and lots of lots of amps because I am a big promoter of a product. Hmm. Um, do, does my content sharing with the various networks of people around me actually drown out those uh, who aren't as deep pocketed from their from the content that they create as opposed to the kind that I'm either creating or promoting uh, for commercial purposes uh, um, so, so that that's a really great question and we spent a lot of time on exactly that question in terms of looking at the dynamics um, I, I think there there are some um, there are there are still some situations where uh, amps uh, with enough force behind them, amps can overpower um, the connectivity and or the re the, the the Rio or, or community standing. Um, but but those are those are really uh, outlier boundary cases. Um, well, because we have a quantitative uh, characterization, we should be able to. Um, Get a, a fairly uh, crisp handle on exactly those situations, and then, um, and then you know, on the one hand, look look for ways to uh, ameliorate that, but also allow com communities to self-adjust around those. Right. I, I, I part of the reason why we said you know this is a how-to manual, not a manifesto, uh, and why we put so much time into making this as quantitative and objective as possible. Is that we, we also believe in the intelligence of uh, of the human community, and so we, we want people to be able to to find exactly the kinds of situations that you've considered, and help us you know figure out interesting mechanisms to balance and address that. Um, so so it's you know I I, I guess you know again it's not. Uh, one size fits all mechanism, but rather uh, uh, as clear and as careful um, uh, articulation of the of the uh, um, fundamental building blocks, so that people can kind of rearrange those building blocks to suit their needs or purposes. Well, that was a buzzkill. <laughs> I'm with you. And I'm, and I'm sure that, uh, that Daniel is as well. Um, how are the, like, are, are there modeling experiments going on currently? I mean, obviously before you have a front end and things, you want to make sure that the network functions uh, as you expect it to. Are there, are there modeling experiments that are occurring uh, in, in control systems, et cetera, it, right now? Or are, are these still uh, ethereal concepts? Uh, no, no, no. These are not ethereal. So, for, first of all, I, I just, I just want to um, be clear. Um, when um, Scenario and Splicious merged, um, uh, the uh, what what happened was essentially the the Splicious code base. Scenario decided uh, after some pretty significant due diligence to to take a dependence on the Splicious code base. Which you can go look at GitHub, right? So there's the special K and the IA, and and actually Scenario has made a, a fork uh, um, because there are changes that that, that that we want to in, 
add to those those code bases. So so that will all be the the forked versions will be made available uh, in upcoming months. But but even with the the um, the public versions, there are there's not just one but two services that have already been built, and the Protunity service. Uh, has been in commercial operation for almost two years now. This April it will be two years, right? So they're running a distributed um, uh, business matching network. It's sort of like um, if if Scenario is the distributed Facebook, then Protunity was aiming to be the distributed LinkedIn. Uh, so so you can you can view that as a kind of very large scale <laughs> uh, simulation. Um, <laughs> Proving it out uh, as an actual commercial service, um, but so so th that's at one level, which is you know, can we actually build a team around a product and get that product running? Um, th but but there's another the point of using the pie calculus uh, and that that piece is that we can also simulate um, using uh, tools like SPIM. Uh, so so there's a there's a stochastic version of the pie calculus which when we've completed all of the scenario specific protocols like the Rio calculation protocol we can then toss those into SPIM and get uh, fairly detailed um, uh, stochastic uh, simulations of how the network will, will um, perform at scale and then in addition we've tried to craft uh, a high-level version of the um, attention model that is independent from its realization on the pi calculus, so that um, whoever wants to can take that and build their own simulations. Like there's a guy who's um, who's a, a big control theory guy who's been working on taking that to build a simulation. Uh, likewise, I've been um, looking at the application of the labeled Markov processes. Uh, to uh, simulating that as well, and the nice thing about the labeled Markov processes is they're not they're not they're, they form a kind of bridge from the the attention model style mathematics to the pi calculus style mathematics, um, and so so that way we get um, multiple different views or multiple different simulations that we can kind of uh, correlate uh, against. Um, uh, against each other, you know, it's like, it's one thing you you build a simulation and you think, ah, it's great, you know, it looks good, but maybe because of the way the simulation is slanted, you miss certain aspects of the dynamics, um, because we want this thing to ultimately be rock solid and you know something people really could trust. Uh, we're building multiple different simulations, um, and then the final point is that. Um, we're also not taking for granted that our formulation of the attention model is uh, uh, the only way you could um, think about modeling improvement of signal in a communication network. And so we, we've we've tried to um, sort of you know have a, a competition or you know comparison between the attention model and other models. And one of the the most well-known models uh, that was actually developed by the same guy who developed neural nets, John Hopfield. Right? He, he, he identified this model called uh, kinetic proofreading. And uh, the nice thing about kinetic proofreading is that it, it's quantitative. You can actually, if you, if you write down the stoichiometry of the, the chemical reactions uh, or the rewrite rules associated with, with a multi-step uh, kinetic proofreading, then you get a set of differential equations that give you the dynamics. Um, and so then we can compare the dynamics of a well-known process like kinetic proofreading against the dynamics of uh, uh, the attention model as was initially intuited by, by, by Dor and, and Yuval um, and, and others in the scenario team. And then we can get a sense that uh, we, can, we can show exactly you know, um, what the effect of this adding this amp-like counterbalance force is in relationship to a well-known process like kinetic proofing. So multiple different simulations, <laughs> implementation, you know, proving it, uh, uh, two different styles of simulations uh, for the, the large-scale um, networks, and then the comparison of attention model to other kinds of model that do the same thing. Thank you. Thanks for your question. That was a great question.
Well, I know we scheduled this for 90 minutes, but uh, uh, I just wanted to, to check in. Uh, you know, I feel like we've covered a lot of territory, uh, and I would be personally, I would be very happy if uh, if the the hour we've we've spent here uh, showed up on YouTube and people could get a, a taste of of what scenario was about. Um, but I'm I'm totally open if people want to keep going. I'm just also, you know, I, I know that <laughs> if a meeting ends early, I'm always happy. <laughs> Uh, what's what's the temperature of the group? Yeah, I think if uh, we don't have any further questions, I think maybe Daniel actually wants to say something. Uh, I was going to ask how easy would it be to implement other calculations apart from Rio calculations on the same network? Like if someone had some other, yeah. Yeah, no, that that's that's a very good question. Um, well. well uh, I mean, you can you can implement just about anything, right? I mean, it's it's just, essentially the nodes can can do messaging for for virtually any any uh, kind of calculation, um, and in fact, you can do uh, uh, you you could simulate virtually any uh, any computation whatsoever <laughs> on the scenario network. The scenario network itself is like a, a giant distributed computer. Um, but uh, but the the real question is uh, again as as you pointed out what computations for what purposes right some of those computations will be never ending um, and and the question is uh, which computations do you want to put into place we do have a mechanism uh, which we mentioned in the paper uh, that's uh, organized the, with the specific purpose of of um, supporting smart contracts um, so. Uh, in the paper, we give this example of um, you know the CDC wanting to ensure um, a certain kind of information flow uh, with respect to the the dissemination of information about a, a public health hazard, um, and so we want to we want to make sure that uh, 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 that we can enable those kinds of communication flow uh, policies. Uh, and also, but also be able to um, check for properties uh, uh, that those policies may or may not have. So um, it's useful to compare that to Ethereum, right? So the Ethereum um, smart contract idea uh, kind of reigns in the computational power through their mechanism of gas, um, but that what it what it doesn't do is it doesn't give you uh, uh, so, so imagine that your your the uh, in parties are involved in a contract, um, and the the it's a high risk contract in the sense that the the stakes are very high. The parties have a lot riding on on the successful execution of the contract, and now they reach the point where they've run out of gas. The contract has run out of gas. Do do they give it more gas? Do they keep going? How, how are they ever going to know if it will successfully complete? They can't know that because of the halting problem, right? And so now they're, now they're in this funny situation where they, they, um, they, don't know, uh, um, they don't know how much to invest and whether or not any more investment is going to reach to a successful outcome. Um, and that's because of the way they've organized their notion of smart contract. The notion of smart contract uh, that, that we're uh, addressing or, or uh, comes directly out of the, the pi calculus style and, and the, the notion of behavioral types or, or Hennessy Milner logics is another way of, uh, of characterizing it. Um, and, and that allows us to look um, at properties. So you can prove once and for all um, whether or not you know, this combination of, of contracts will uh, eventually, uh, or, or ha have um, you'll you'll see certain kinds of inform information flow. For in the example I give in the paper, um, you can prove things like everybody gets to know. So in a in a public uh, health hazard situation, that's a very important property, right? You 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 want to be able to say that eventually everybody gets to know, and then you'd all but you'd also like to be able to say, well, and the healthcare providers know before the the press does that that kind of thing. Um, so, so those are things that we can check, but we can also we don't have to have this 
in any way be centralized, right? So the CDC can say to participate with us, here's the policy that we adhere to. And the, uh, the healthcare provider network can say to participate with us, here's the policy that we adhere to. And the news agencies can likewise say, here's the policy that we adhere to. And then the system policy is essentially the composition of those policies. And then you can check the composition of those policies against properties like everybody gets to know. Uh, so, um, so that's a, that's. Uh, uh, sorry, it's such a long-winded answer, Daniel. Um, but the the point is that um, uh, there is flexibility in uh, the computations that can be realized over the network, and there's a way to connect that flexibility to this goal-oriented kind of communication that you were mentioning before. Does does that does that help? Yeah, are you imagining people like writing apps for scenario? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah. So we're imagining that that that, scenario, that that we're at the very tip, at the very very beginning of the kind of applications that people could use scenario for. Sweet, that rocks. <laughs> Uh, well, guys, I, I, I really want to thank everyone for, for coming, and uh, I am, um, I'm, I'm very excited about this, and I think the, 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 one of the neatest things about the whole, uh, whole thing is just the, the community that is, is uh, um, being attracted around the idea. I mean, certainly the, the scenario team is just phenomenal uh, in terms of their creativity and insight. and and uh, passion, but also, I mean, you know, the kinds of questions we've been getting, uh, I mean, Craig, your input was just uh, amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, I, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, I've had a chance to, 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 to meet with Bill Gates on several occasions, uh, and, and you showed all of the astuteness that I normally uh, associate with Bill, where he could just, like, go through what about this point? What about this point? <laughs> uh, so very, very, very impressive, and I and I, I just I just think that the people that are being attracted to the scenario uh, uh, community, uh, you know, share share these kinds of superpowers. And so it's cool. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, click. Uh, Click end, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, further engagement. Lisa, did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, I just wanted to say um, sorry for jumping in late, and it's a very interesting project, and I'm looking forward to the announcement and collaborating further with you guys. Sweet. All right. Ciao. See you in scenario. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Thanks.